Hi everyone, welcome back to Box Delight. In this video we're going to be playing Bottom of the Ninth from Dice Hate Me Games and Greater Than Games, designed by Daryl Lauder and Mike Mullins. If you don't know the rules of baseball, go and check out my video on Stratomatic Baseball because I introduce you know, how baseball plays and some of the rules. Uh, because this game is going to assume you know a little bit about baseball. If I'm putting it in the context of the game rules, you might get a little bit lost at times. But hopefully with my video, I'm going to demonstrate the solitaire game, the solo game, where you're playing the batters, the hitters, and the game is playing the defensive team with the pitcher, throwing your pitches, and you swinging to get a run. The game's called the bottom of the ninth. In baseball, you play nine innings. Um, the top of the inning, the home team are pitching. In the bottom, the home team are hitting. Okay, so we're in the bottom, we're the home team, we're hitting, and the idea is that in the bottom of the ninth, okay, our opponents have just taken their at-bats, they've got three outs, we've come into bat, the idea is that everything's square, and what we've got to do is score at least one run to take the game. These are the pitching dice, the two white ones, the red one's the hitter's dice, I kind of wish they'd switch the colours actually because everything else that represents the picture is red. Um, number of outs, the number of strikes, and the number of balls. Okay, three strikes and you're out. Four balls and the man at the plate gets to walk to first base. All right, a strike is a ball thrown through the strike zone. A ball is a ball thrown out of the strike zone in simple terms, okay? Now obviously you can have things like a swing and strike where you hit it and miss, or if you hit it and foul back then that's a strike. Um, if you've already got two strikes then a foul is considered not a strike, alright? So there's little nuances of the game that you need to kind of know in order to play. But hopefully we'll cover most of that as we go along. Now in the Player versus player game, you're going to have pitcher fatigue, all right? And that's a big part of the game of baseball. And indeed, a lot of the strategy for player versus player is about managing this pitcher's fatigue. Now, as it goes, we're going to lose these tokens in the solo game. You don't need them because pitcher's fatigue is going to be represented by this pitcher deck, this, these challenges, okay? So keep that in mind. Also in the player versus player game, each player gets a couple of tokens to show the location of the pitch um, and the batter is trying to read the pitch and guess whether it's like inside and high, inside means near the pitcher, away is over the furthest side of the plate, high, high in the strike zone, low, low in the strike zone, close to the ground. Now as it goes, we don't need two sets, we only need one set, we're playing solo. Now who's pitching? We take all our pitcher cards, now if you've just got the base set then you may not have so many um, pitcher cards, but if you've got some of the expansions you should have a whole stack of these. What we're going to do is stack these, we're going to shuffle them up and whoever comes out on top is our pitcher. Okay, we've got the South Pole straw. Okay, so Stephanie's pitching, uh, relief pitcher will be underneath, and so on. Okay, so if a pitcher gets ejected from the game, then the next pitcher comes in. All right. Now we have something called a situation and effect cards. They kind of add a little bit of variability to the game, particularly the effect cards. With situations, this is the situation as we enter the bottom of the ninth. So for your first game, in solo mode, you always pick the home opener. It's, set, it's, it's distinguished from the rest of the challenge cards by being double sided. Okay, so the home opener says the score is zero, 0 We've got a man on first, first base. Uh, we've got one out, one out. Um, we're in the ninth inning. Yeah. Good to go. Okay, winning the ninth and we get seven MPs. Uh, often you'll see other effects on the game, like here, manager's decision. 
for the opening one. It just says, let's play ball. Okay? So that's our situation. Next, you take all the effect cards. Okay? The ones without the baseball diamond on them. We're going to give them a shuffle. And choose one randomly. Okay, we've got dialed in. It says that the pitcher may re-roll the pitch die once on a ball five or a ball six. Alright, that'll make sense once we start seeing the gameplay. Okay, there's our situation and our effects. Next, we take the challenge cards for uh, effects and mix them in with the situation. So we'll give them a good shuffle. And these represent the fatigue or the stamina, if you like, of the pitcher. Place these here. Now we need to create a little bit of space here. Let's move the box lid. We'll move this down here because we need to have a discard pile here. Every time the pitcher is fatigued, we're going to discard a card. Every time the, uh, the pitcher gets relief, we take a card from the bottom of the discard, and stick it back on the bottom. Okay. Now when this deck runs out, then the pitcher is exhausted. Now I've kind of used all the information from home and so I'm going to switch it over to its reverse side because here we've got some pitcher mitigation. Now one thing you'll notice there's a little bit of errata here. It'll make sense when we get into gameplay, but it says the pitcher always activates their ace and traits unless a strike and it says five. I've changed mine to a six. It should say straight six, uh, corner one, corner six or rolled or attainable. All right? This is going to be our little reference for the AI that drives the pitcher's decisions. Next up we pick our team. Now you need one player, one player card, I've got a whole stack of player cards, to play in each position. Now I've just gone through and picked these randomly as it goes, um, just by choosing the first one that fit at each position. So we've got Leslie Lou. Um, I've got nine, I've got nine hitters on my team by the way. Um, the game says use six, but as a variant you can use as many as you wish. You could up to the full nine, right? The full baseball team is nine. But if you do pick nine, then you have to pick a pitcher. Um, it's kind of American League, uh, sorry, National League rules. Um, in American League you have a, a designated hitter in place of the pitcher. But you have to pick a pitcher, we're playing National League rules here. Right, so I've got Leslie Liu as my pitcher. So she's going to be batting ninth. And then I've got the shortstop, uh, centre field, left field, and then the right field we've got uh, shoestring pinch back, right field. Okay, we've got third base, Rodney Whip as catcher. Um, he's our cleanup man. I've got Kapowski, the first baseman, uh, pinch back in right field, and Mully Noma, our utility. Infielder, he's playing second base. All right, so you can take any one of those infield positions: first, second, third, short. All right, so that's my lineup. The order is significant. Now, obviously, we're assuming that we're back at the top of the order uh, with a man on base and one out. So there you go. I mean, there's no rules governing the uh, the batting order, but it may be that one of these effects might alter alter things up in terms of your lineup. So we've got Mully at the plate. Switch him over because you want to see his stats. He's a righty. We've got shoestring on deck and Kapowski in the hole. So we might see just two of these batters given that we've got one out already. Okay, let's get things started off.